Welcome back. Exotics Partners, a research company based in London, has assigned a new buy recommendation on Nigeria Treasury bills. They expect solid double-digit returns in U.S. dollar terms. Specifically, they recommend 12-month bills with a yield of 22.4%. Other research organization also kept its buy on CARE's Treasury bill. Let's bring in now the Chief Economist at Exotics Partners London, Alan Cameron, to talk us through this. Good afternoon, Alan. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. Now, what makes Nigeria's treasury bills a buy? Is it liquidity or the yield? It's a simple question of yield. We haven't seen the kind of rate in Nigeria or in many parts of Africa for quite a long time. Um, so basically, if you're buying into the local treasury bill market now, you're getting yields of you know, between 22 and 23 percent at one year. And we think that provides you more than adequate protection um, in terms of you know, where the exchange rate might, might move. In fact, where we feel fair value exists for, for the Naira is actually stronger than where we are today. So I think you know, in, even in a, in a bearish case scenario, you might still pick up a double digit return. And in a bullish case scenario, you, you might be looking at returns, you know, of over 20 percent. So uh, to us, it's not a very difficult call to make. Now, do you share any concerns whatsoever over Nigeria's high interest rates and high inflation, as well as local exchange rate risks? Yeah, I mean, I think there's, there's the other side to the trade, which is that the government is going to be paying quite a bit to service its debt. And it's going to cost the central bank money as well as the central bank issues OMO bills into the market that are, you know, have these high yields. Um, but that's a gamble that the government has made. They, they tried to do this to try and bring liquidity back into the spot market and to try and catalyze investment into the economy. Um, and I think, you know, it's, it's a very textbook um, set of measures which they followed. And I think that, you know, the textbook response, which is that foreign investors will come in and start buying this paper is, is very likely to follow. And, you know, we feel it's not a a very difficult thing to, to recommend. So obviously there are there is a downside to this to this trade, but um, you know it's a it's a it's a measured gamble which the government and the central bank are making. Now, what is your medium to long term outlook for Nigerian government treasuries? Well, these yields are not going to last forever. Um, I mean, clearly they're they're there as a special incentive for those people who are willing to come in early. Um, but I think if you believe that the policy rate is going to be set according to inflation, our view is that inflation mm. is very likely to have um, plateaued at a high level. And I think, um, you know, it's probably going to stay around this level for another several months. And then we're going to be working off of a higher base. And therefore, the headline rates of year and year inflation are likely to come down uh, from early 2017. So it's not going to last forever. It's, it's a finite um, window. So I think over the medium term, yeah, we, we definitely expect lower interest rates. I mean, the interest rates at this level just can't really last. The economy mm. can't take it. Right. Now, let's look at Kenya. That country uh, is facing low currency depreciation and uh, budget constraints arising from weak economic conditions. What makes Kenya's treasury bill a buy beyond attractive yield? Um, well, I think Kenya, it's, um, it's less of a trading call and more of a you know, fundamental call. I think if you look at the, the Kenyan economy, you have an example um, of an economy that's fairly well diversified by African standards and where there's going to be a continued growth story, regardless of what happens to commodity prices. So if you look at the long term history of, of Kenya, I mean, they're, they're a net commodity importer. And right now they're growing at about twice the African average. The reason that's happening is because the economy mm -hmm is driven by investment more than it's driven um, by consumption or exports. And, and that's, that's what we, we see continuing going forward. So there it's less of a trading call. It's more of a structural call on, on the economy. And if you had to pick a credit on that basis uh, in the US dollar space, that's, that's what we would recommend. Now, what are the long-term outlook on CARES yields as the government seeks to cap banks' lending rates? Well, I think, it, yeah, in the, in the local market, um, that's an open question. I think our, our belief at this point is that, um, you know, the, the law, the, the, the proposal in its current form is not going to make its way into law, that there'll be some back and forth. And, you know, very likely the president will probably send the bill back to parliament for it to be reviewed. Um, clearly, you know, we're heading into elections. There's a lot of populist pressure, but 
if you were to pass the bill in its current form, I think that you know it would involve quite a bit of pain for the banking sector, and it would put the central bank in uh, in an awkward position because what the central bank is trying to do right now is um, clean up the banking sector, and they're trying to get banks to acknowledge asset quality issues that have existed for the last 10 or 15 years. And if they're doing that into an environment where banks' returns are going to be capped by a new interest rate bill, um, it's, a, it's a little bit counterproductive. So if I had to guess, I would say that the Central Bank of Kenya is probably against this uh, bill, and I'm not sure it will actually get passed. Right. Thank you very much um, for your time, Alan. That was Alan Cameron, the chief economist at um, Exotics Partners um, London. And now let's um, take a quick look at the activities of the debt market for today. Fixed income trader at GT Bank, Leko Olabisi, joins me now. Good afternoon, Leko. Yeah, good afternoon. So what is the yield trading at today? Yeah, well, we've seen a pretty bullish week. Um, today right now, yields uh, the slight rally in the bonds market. Right now, across the yield curve, the shortest tenor is at 14.35%. And uh, the long tenor is at like 15.2%, which is very good for the market. We've not seen this kind of activity in a while, actually. All right. Um, is the last trading day for the week. Could you wrap up the week for us and give us a sense of um, next week, uh, how next week is going to look like? Yeah, well, this week, as expected, um, dealers expected it to be slightly um, bullish because we had some uh, maturities earlier in the week. We had a bond maturity in the week about um, 580 billion into the system. Um, although the CBN also conducted some OMO auctions, but um, we saw OMO auctions closing at 18% and 18.5. But like I said earlier, it's been a very bullish week across the yield curve from treasury bills all the way to bond. All right, thank you very much um, for your time, Aliko. And um, in Egypt, uh, that government has asked JP Morgan, City BP, NP Paribas and Nazis to lead management of its international bond offer. Egypt's government approved earlier this month plans for an international bond issuance of between $3 billion and $5 billion. The country also plans to receive $2 billion deposit from Saudi Arabia. Now, Egypt signed a raft of um, agreements with Saudi Arabia during a visit by the Saudi king in April including plans for a 60 billion Saudi real investment fund. Our Kenyan University student built his own drone, but it's unable to fly it in the country due to regulations restricting use of the technology. And old bet has already used his technology for agricultural research in neighboring Tanzania. Let's watch this. University of Nairobi student and electronics researcher Arnold Bett built his own drone and has already been used to gather valuable data on potatoes growing in neighboring Tanzania. Bett's interest in unmanned aerial vehicles started in 2008 when the technology was very new in the region. Thanks to 3D printing, availability of cheap local components and a growing interest in the technology for commercial use worldwide, he put together his first prototype in 2015. Buying a ready commercial uh, drone is very expensive, and that will mostly range between $5,000 to $6,000. And, and for us, building one, the most probably it will cost us is about uh, $1,000, but on average, $500 to $1,000. Yes, the drone is powered by rechargeable batteries, has a range of 200 meters in height, weighs 2.5 kilograms and can carry a standard camera with special sensors. Named the Octocopter, Bet's drone was recently used for research carried out jointly by the University of Nairobi, the University of Missouri and the International Potato Center. Researchers say Octocopter was able to identify 14 varieties of sweet potatoes in fields in Mwanza, Tanzania through drone-based remote sensing. We'll take a quick break and when we return, we'll look at um, the interbank foreign exchange market and see how the Naira is doing today. Do stay with us. <laughs> 